So let's go ahead and do this. A video about photographs, composites, and CGI's. This video is about the differences between computer generated images, or CGI, composite images, and actual photographs. And since Flat Earthers seem to lack the ability to read, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this. Oh, and pay no attention to the little graphic in the corner for right now. We'll talk about that later. First, we'll concentrate on the photographs, because it's the simplest thing to cover. Here's the definition of a photograph, a picture made using a camera in which an image is focused on the light sensitive material and then made visible and permanent by chemical treatment or stored digitally, meaning pointing a camera at something and taking a photograph of it. Pretty simple. This is a composite image of an intersection in downtown Leipzig. Some would call it a panorama, and others would just call it a picture. The reason why it's called a composite image is because it is comprised of several strips of images compiled together to create a single composite. And of course, the purpose of this is to create a single view of an area which might not otherwise be possible using the lens or the position of the camera. Since the smartphone I used to take this shot does not have a wide angle lens on it, my camera takes several shots to accomplish my desired result. Another noticeable trait of composites is if there are moving objects during the time of the composite shooting, they will either appear chopped up or even doubled depending on the time between the individual shots, while the static objects remain in their current and correct locations. If you wanted to create a composite of the entire surface of an object, you would take photos of its surface from several different angles, in this case, a low orbiting satellite, then place it onto a virtual model so you can use all of those images as a whole, while the model still retains being a grouping of actual photographs, and then you can position it any way you need it. Computer generated imagery is primarily images or objects which are 100% created from computer generated art and models. First you start with a virtual object, comprised of virtual three dimensional coordinates, more commonly called a mesh. Then you can also add lighting. Then you attach an image or a virtual material to the surface of that mesh to give it the desired appearance. Then you can define its reflections and textures, and you can also add layers to it, like in this case, clouds and an atmosphere. And since you're working with a virtual model or a composite on a virtual object, you can adjust the model or camera properties to get your desired view. Like here, dollying the camera closer to the object while simultaneously expanding the field of view. And now I'm going to address this ignorant slide. This slide shows up in several Flat Earth videos, as well as being used as answers to posts and comment threads. I'm going to tell you what NASA says about all eight of these images. And I think you'll find something very interesting about this slide, which I will explain at the end of the image descriptions. In the first version of this video, I actually read off the entire captions below each image as posted by NASA but that made the video about 25 minutes long. So I'm just going to give you the summary of each one. You can hit pause on each one and read it yourself or click the links in the description below to each and every one of them. Okay, let's go. The first image, which is claimed as being taken in 1975, is actually stated to be taken in 1972 by Apollo 16 with a Hasselblad camera. This is a photo, not a composite, and not CGI. This is slide number two, taken in 2015. This is also a photo. This is also a single shot, comprised of three different colored shots, but still a single shot taken from the Discover satellite. This is not a composite, and this is not CGI. Image three, from 2007. This is a multi-layered composite. The Earth in it is from the Blue Marble Project. The clouds in it are from the GOES satellite, basically superimposed on top of each other to end with this image. This is a composite, not claiming to be a single shot photo. Okay, so the next one. Image four, it's slated as being 1997, but it's actually a kind of array of different times. It is also a composite from the US Geological Survey, NOAA, Blue Marble Project, and the GOES satellite, similar to the one we just saw. Now, the only reason why this was classified as a photo from 1997 is because of the NOAA data from September 9th, 1997 about the hurricane and the cloud coverage. Now I know a lot of folks want to say something about the moon being added to this image, but since flat earthers don't know anything about scale or perspective, 
like this guy. Okay, so there's the moon in this shot, um, really close to the Earth, but the moon's not really that close to the Earth. Um, the distance is supposed to be 239,000 miles away, but our eye altitude from the surface of the Earth is only showing 90, well, or, uh, 9,154 miles away from the surface of the Earth. But the moon is supposedly uh, a lot closer than that, according to what we're seeing here from this initial, um, this official NASA photography here. So that's not really matching up. Who was actually debunked by this guy a long time ago. Now, Satellite Rob is over a million miles away. And what do you know? We've come up with pretty much the same exact results that NASA had. I won't go into the lack of research that flat earthers do. It basically makes no sense to discuss this with a flat earther. Image 5 from 2007. Now saying 2007 on this one is a little bit pushing it. It was released in 2007, completed in 2007, but the images and the composites of blue marble and MODIS images span from 1994 all the way up till 2004. This is a composite, not claiming to be a single shot photo, and it's not CGI. Image 6. This, this is also a composite of Veer's images taken from aboard the Suomi NPP satellite. But it got the year right on this one. This is a composite. It's not claiming to be a single shot photo, and it's not CGI. Image 7. Boy, y'all love this one. This is a composite of imagery, again from the Suomi NPP, taken around 2012. And as I showed you a little earlier, since it is a composite, which is put onto a virtual model, the reason why... The United States looks a bit out of whack in this is because the camera is close to the virtual model, but with a wide field of view. Nothing tricky, nothing weird. That's just how you make this. So again, this is a composite. It is not claiming to be a single shot photo and it's not CGI. And image eight. Everybody knows this image. It's from 2002. This image is from the Blue Marble Project, which is a composite of satellite images. Nobody ever claimed it to be an actual photo, and it's not CGI. All good? All right. So in short, the person who made the eight image slide knows that his claims are wrong because he had to research the actual pictures to get the dates of them. He knows that six out of eight of them are composites and only two of them are actual single frame photos. Now we'll address the claims at the bottom. How big is America? Well, America is the term for the New World. There's a North, Central, and South America. And from head to toe, it's about mm, 15,500 kilometers long. Uh, uh, oh, wait, you're probably talking about this picture and why it looks different than these. Well, simple, it's a composite. The camera viewing the model at this particular point has an expanded field of view while being close to the surface. There's no deeper reason than that. Next question, what color are the oceans and the land? Given the nature of how these composites are made and what they are actually used for, the colors are somewhat irrelevant. Again, because different techniques were used in the composite development. Some things were enhanced or tuned to reveal a certain characteristic of a location. So what's so odd about that? Next question. Why is there never any real video of the Earth spinning, only stills? Well, you know what? I'll save that till the end. Why are the images so varied? Well, I said that already. The images are varied simply because these six are composites which were used and developed for different things, different studies, etc. Which is why they look very different from these. Next question. Do you really believe this is where you live? Well, in the absence of any other testable facts, and because all experimentation concludes it, I'm going to say yes. So, next question. Do you actually trust NASA? Having heard close to all the claims of fakery and reviewed them to find nothing, absolutely nothing conclusive, having been provided with nothing but echoed claims which no FE or hoaxer has ever been able to independently substantiate with other than their paranoid and conspiracy-based ramblings, as disappointed as I might be in today's NASA, I've never seen anything that causes me to question that trust. Oh, and someone asked me the other day why we don't see aircraft in the photos of the Earth. 
This claim is simply ignorant to the facts. The largest commercial airliner right now is the Airbus A380. It has a wingspan of 80 meters. So if we made, let's say, the Airbus A380 one pixel in size on a photograph of the Earth, with the Earth's diameter at approximately 12,742,000 meters, at 80 meters a pixel, the photograph of the Earth would have to be 159,275 pixels wide, or 25 point four gigapixels in resolution and it wouldn't even be noticeable as an aircraft it would be a little square and then we would be arguing over what that pixel actually is okay as promised let's get back to this question why is there never any real video of the earth spinning in the time that this video has been rolling the earth has rotated this much so i don't even know exactly what's supposed to be so exciting about that or what it would prove Y'all have a nice day. Oh my god.